Uganda, commonly known as the Pearl of Africa, is located in the eastern part of Africa. The country has a population of 37 million people. 52% of the population are women. Olilim Subcounty, Utuke District, Northern Uganda. The women of Moyao Women's Group in a song praising the Shia nut tree. A tree that produces a nut from which Shia butter is extracted. These women received funding from Uganda Women's Entrepreneurship Program, a government initiative implemented by the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. This group deals in the making of Shia butter. With support from government, their business is now booming. The history of Uganda is characterized by struggles, struggles of people fighting for their rights and freedom, people struggling for their place and recognition in society. Significant among these people are the women. After a long history of neglect and marginalization in the process of national development, the government of the Republic of Uganda realized that the women who form the majority, 86.2% of the actors in the informal sector, suffered exclusion from the form of financial services, and this limited their capacity to grow and expand their businesses. The Uganda Women's Entrepreneurship Program, UWEP, was created as a government initiative aimed at improving access to financial services by women and equipping them with skills for enterprise growth, value addition, and marketing of their services and products. When we went to Beijing, we identified 12 critical areas which concern women, and we agreed that our governments should work on those 12 critical areas, education, health, water, maternal health, and others, but mostly economic empowerment of women. In brief, WEP is intended to empower the Ugandan woman for economic development. Initially, the program is funded by the government of Uganda under the Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. The idea of having the Women Entrepreneurship Program was an idea which actually was given to us by the President himself. When we were in recovery in the year 2015, on International Women's Day, the President said that the women need some fund. We may empower the home by planting coffee, planting fruits, giving them dairy cows, giving them uh, poultry, tigger, and so on. But if the husband is not working closely with the, the wife, the wife may be left out of, of, of those opportunities. So therefore, I am ready to look at, in fact I was already thinking about it, because I could see it. To say, okay, the man has now gone into coffee, has gone into fruits, has gone into their family, he has woken up from sleep, he is now an active economic person. But let's have a fund for the wife. Just in case, if the wife is, uh, wants to borrow and do other things, other non-agricultural things, like artisanship, or her own agricultural project, let her have that possibility. How do you bring the capacity of women? to liberate themselves. And secondly, is to see that we get these women credit facilities. As you know, most of the uh, land belongs to women, to men. And to get a loan from the bank, you need collateral security. So we said, how do we make sure that these women can also get some credit without necessarily producing collateral security? The third, uh, objective is to make sure that these women, as they produce, 
can we get help them to get market for what they are producing? The fourth objective is to help them access modern technologies so that they can even add value on what they are doing. The state can empower the women directly because that one is not under contention. You may not, your husband may not give you the land, but you can go and uh, run a maize meal in the trading center, and the state can help you to do that. Who will stop you from running your maize meal? How about to, um, a juice extractor? a hand room for making textiles. So we have started the women fund. There is still some little money there, but once we are able, we want to put more money, more money, more money, <laughs> so that while the issues of family property are being sorted out, you move. Already, a good number of poor women have been enrolled in the program countrywide, and many more are still being enrolled in many districts of Uganda. We deal with the districts, district structures, starting right from the district level, the municipality, right up to the sub-county level. Yes, the kind of group which is it's women 18 to 65 years old. When we were planning this project, we planned that we would target 100,000 women per year expecting that at the end of the five years would have reached 500,000 women. But what is important to note is that this program targets those women who are not in gainful employment, women who cannot go to the bank to access credit because they don't have a collateral. So these are the women in the rural areas who are engaged in agriculture, they are engaged in produce buying, they are engaged in tailoring, they are engaged in pancakes. So they, they, cannot, they, they cannot get money from a normal institution of a bank. We've so far funded 349 groups, that's around 4,619 women have accessed the fund. We've carried out various trainings, oriented district leaders, uh, had a training of trainers, and also we've had training of the sub-county technical staff who are really the ones who are implementing the program at the ground level and also district people. We want to be the first women group in the district to so that women should stop begging their men and the community around, stop, uh, stop walking to the street, they have a lot to do. Moyao women now boost of having enough capital that runs their business, which is growing at a very fast speed. On top of producing a larger quantity of sheer butter, which gives them a sizable profit, the project has also helped them to get training in making cream, bathing soap and jelly. These new products have given the group extra income. Epikosiki Ikliok is a name given to this group in Katakui, Teso sub-region, eastern Uganda. It literally means women are challenging men. This was originally a women's savings group where women used to go for loans. On receiving funding from Uwe, the women ventured into metal fabrication, a job that was known to be a men's domain. With this support, some women who received earlier training in metal works are now also training their peers. This fabrication workshop has an advantage of being the only one in the area. They have diversified their business by opening up a hardware shop. It's a very good program because, you know, it is always very difficult to get capital. You can have an idea, but when you don't have the capital, you cannot move. <laughs> Naiga Gazaina of Gemakumuino Women's Group in Mayuge District, Busoga sub-region, has nothing but praises for UEP. She had never dreamt of possessing her own bicycle, even being able to buy a goat which is now producing others. 
The project helped their group to acquire skills in handbag and necklace making. UEP funded them with 2 million Uganda shillings, which helped them to buy enough materials for their trade. Still in Busoga sub-region, Bushweza People with Disabilities Women Association in Yamuiwa sub-county is another group that benefited from the project, taking advantage of having a lot of ground nuts in the area. They acquired a ground nut sheller machine. They have the monopoly of this business here. The machine helped them to earn money from their ever service demanding customers. UEP has also spread its tentacles to Western Uganda. A number of women's groups has already received support from UEP. Women's groups in Chiruhura district have specialized in bull fattening business. This is basically a cattle keeping area. In Chiruhura district, Kanyarieru, Rwamuranda, Echitegura women received 8 million Uganda shillings from which they bought 18 bulls. They are now rearing them. On selling them, they will get profits which they expect to use to expand their business. Still in Chirura, there is also Ruyonza Abachara to Kwatanize, who also received 8 million. They also opted for bull fattening. While the Akanara women preferred goat rearing business. In Chisoro, Matianzo women group deal in growing Irish potatoes. Twelve women from this village, Matiazo village, came at the subcount and applied for this web fund. They applied for seven million and they were approved and financed by the Ministry of Gender. Their project was growing Irish potatoes. I'm very happy they are doing their project very well. They have planted Irish potatoes. We planted the five sacks of Irish potato seed. We are expecting to get 20 sacks of Irish potato, big size. In the last season, in January, they harvested 64 sacks, of which each sack costed at 120000 and they paid back 2.8 million uh, on Centenary Bank on the district recovery. What has made me happy as a service provider, I did not struggle with them to recover the money. All of a sudden they came at the sub count and they gave me a receipt after paying. That is an indication that they are doing well with their repayment plan. In the same district, the Kagano Bakara Tudwanyubukene group opted for onions. had uh, an overwhelming demand. So those in need and the amount that has been allocated, the key thing is that at least we've shown that this kind of modality can work and we hope that as we move, government will be allocating more funds and then more women will benefit. In the next five years, we want to see that at least, at least, more than 500,000 women have access to this money. And when you talk about 500,000 women, you can multiply by five. Because average, you have got a woman looking after like five people, looks after the husband, looks after the child, children, looks after grandchildren, there are those with the orphans. So, our target is to see that every year we can access maybe 70,000 uh, 70,000, even 100,000 women. And then in the five years, maybe about 500. But that is, of course, being at the, uh, at the highest level. But we have always to be uh, optimistic. With only one year of activity, the program is already showing Alex success. Only if it attracts more funding, the poor women of Uganda would go a long way to realize their dream of financial independence.